Welcome, everybody, to episode 147 of The China Show. Man, do we have a lot to talk about today. Yes, we're going to be talking a lot about the balloon. We're going to be talking a lot about some new developments about a new balloon that's just been shot down or a new unidentified high-altitude object. UFO. A UFO, yeah, yes. If you think about it. Yeah, sure. And uh, we're also going to be talking about, of course, lasers that are being shot from a Chinese satellite now, down onto Hawaii. Can I please, please preface this before everyone runs away? Mm-hmm. This is not a tinfoil hat conspiracy theory channel. There's no bullshit about aliens. <laughs> no, There's not, not some weird, like, mm-hmm. you know, mind control laser crap. That's I understand <laughs> that's what it sounds like, and that's just because of how the dominoes have been falling. <laughs> yeah. Spy balloons <clears throat> and UFOs and lasers. I get it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I get it, but mm-hmm. it's all legitimate. It's all been proven. Yeah. Um, so we're going to be uh, putting our kind of analysis on that from uh, being China watchers, people that have spent over a decade in China analyzing why the Chinese government does what it does. Yeah. So uh, stay tuned for that. Been doing a lot of research into the whole laser yeah. thing. So we got a lot of insight into that. But uh, I suppose let's just saunter right into it yeah. with what's new, where we talk about what's new with regards to China. And of course, what's new in China has something to do with... Um, oh, give me a second, I suppose. Yeah, it's got something to do with this this old building over here. What is this? It's got five sides. Yes, no, it One might call the it pen- the Pentagon. The Pentagon. Yeah. yeah, they could have made it the Octagon. You Did know, you say it doesn't. No, it does. No, I know it does, yeah. but I was just thinking like it, it could have more. Then it could be the Octagon. Oh yeah, yeah, but that's like a fighting ring. Yeah, yeah. Anyway, let's anyway. Uh, so basically, what happened was the Pentagon ordered um, a shoot down, a mm-hmm. military shoot down of a uh, unidentified object that was flying over Alaska while well, Alaskan waters. This was like only two hours ago or something. Yeah, like. it was like pretty. I think it happened at like four. We're in Eastern time, so like four, three or four p.m. Anyway, this happened uh, very, very soon after the U.S. just shot down a spy balloon from China. So everyone's kind of on high alert right now. Um, nobody has confirmed that it's from China or even what it was. We know that it's about as big as a car. Um, yeah, flying at forty thousand feet. Flying at forty thousand mm-hmm. feet, so a little bit above where airplanes go, basically, mm-hmm. at max altitude. Um, could be a balloon. But most importantly is there's going to be a, some sort of briefing on TV, I guess, later. Um, we'll try to find out what's going on. Yeah, so right now we can't really talk much on it, but what... I, I do can, want to show the clip, though. Oh, yeah. What yeah. I can say is that it's uh, it's in the same sort of area where the other... Yes. The, where the spy balloon came from. Yeah. The Chinese spy balloon. Yeah. So the Chinese spy balloon flew in from that, that specific place yeah. and then went down through Canada and then into the USA. Yes. So this just got shut down in Alaska before it was allowed to traverse... Canada right. and the USA. Anyway, you say you have a clip, do you? To rumors that there is another Chinese balloon above Alaska or any other parts of U.S. territory that the U.S. shot down? So I can confirm that the Department of Defense was tracking a high-altitude object over Alaska airspace in the last 24 hours. Out, uh, the, uh, the object was flying at an altitude of uh, 40,000 feet and posed a reasonable threat to the safety of civilian flight. Out of an abundance of caution and at the recommendation of the Pentagon, President Biden ordered the military to down the object. And they did. And it came in inside our territorial waters. Now, those waters right now are frozen, but inside uh, territorial uh, airspace and over territorial waters. Fighter aircraft assigned to U.S. Northern Command took down the object within the last hour. Yeah, so... uh... We got a little meme here. <laughs> yeah, well, this kind of sets up what we want to get into. So anyway, mm-hmm. we'll obviously be, I'll keep my eye on during the stream. Yeah, we'll see if anything comes uh, yeah, that. to light as far as the new uh, unidentified object. Yes. It sounds like it's probably another balloon. But what about the old one? Well, I mm-hmm. just put out a video. We did a huge coverage of this last week, and I put out mm-hmm. a video uh, a couple days ago about this. Basically, the Chinese spy balloon, uh, they're, they're pulling it up right now. Well, they've identified like the, the package yeah, uh, in the, the water main, right main now. Package. And we, the most important thing about this whole scenario is we've been tracking how China has been dealing with this. Their mm. PR, how they're putting it out there, whose fault it is, um, what it actually is. And there was a huge kind of <clears> flip-flop <throat> that happened over and over again during their cover-up campaign. Yeah. 
we saw uh, huge amounts of propaganda agents out there trying to say that it wasn't a Chinese balloon at all. Correct. To begin with. Then after China took the ownership of the balloon, they obviously had to change their narrative, right? Yeah, now they're, yes, it's Chinese, yeah. but it's actually just a civilian airship. Right, and then when it mm. turns out that wasn't the case, then it became this weird gaslighting situation where they were like, they stopped talking about what its purpose was and then started talking about, well, the U.S., it's the U.S.'s fault for making this a big deal because it's not a big deal. Yeah, yeah. It was this bizarre, almost like a self own we yeah. watch unfold uh, over this past week or so. Uh, this mo- this meme, if you guys are listening, it says, it's just a civilian balloon, not ours. And how dare you shoot our balloon? And they decided to push both buttons. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah, it's so They silly. had to. They had to send their government out there, the foreign ministry, to say, how dare you shoot down the balloon? And they had the gall, yeah. the gall of saying that they, the U.S. isn't allowed to shoot their balloon over their own territory. Yeah. It was insane. They're like, this goes against international practice or whatever. Yeah. You know what goes against international law and practice is is incursion into someone's airspace. Yeah, I think that's the that's the part where you break the rule. Yeah, yeah. you don't do that. Yeah. You know, once it's broken the, the, the country's airspace, they are allowed to shoot it down. Yeah. Okay? It's, it's it not against international practice no. to shoot down a spy balloon. No. Okay? No. It's how it works. It was gaslighting bullshit I've ever seen. So, you life. know, the Soviets shut down an American, um, you know, U-2 spy plane during, yeah. you know, the Cold War. Yeah. And that was okay. Yeah. The U.S. wasn't saying, like, how dare you? How dare you? Do, they were to like, give us our plane back. Yeah, they were yeah. like, whoops, you caught us. You caught us. That's how there it works. There we go. Yeah. The, China has <laughs> the, the gall to, to try to play every single side. Yeah. It's insane. Yeah. yeah. Um, but anyway, to set this up, we just want to show you some of the stuff that was going around here. Um, yeah. Don't know why their fake Transformers tractor is in there. But yeah, this this was a... Sorry, this I'll was just a good... go back a little bit here because no, okay. it was the... The, the Transformers tractor, for some reason, anyway. Yes. Some reason the Transformers tractor is in there. Um, why don't you read Hua Chunying's uh, little quote here? So Hua Chunying is the you know Ministry uh, Ministry of Foreign Affairs spokesperson for China. Okay, who for some reason doesn't ever speak in English and only speaks in Chinese, even though her briefings are yeah. for the English speaking yes. world. Tweets in English though. Yes, of course. Yeah, someone she, does for her. Yeah. So the, this Chinese government official said, they are treating the accident in the most dramatic way possible. They seek to make a mountain out of a molehill and depict the balloon as proof of the China threat. Bro, it was a spy balloon. Yeah. W- what do you, you know, what do you mean? Yeah. It is a threat. But by the way, for those of you who don't know, um, while the balloon was floating over American, you know, sensitive um, in military sites and so on, uh, the U.S., sent up U-2 spy planes and took very high-resolution photos of it and all the equipment on board. And they determined that there were antenna on there that could, you know, do signal intelligence gathering, you know? And this is something that uh, we were talking about when we first spoke about this balloon. That's the big danger of a balloon, and that's what makes it different from a satellite, is the fact that it has the capabilities of basically soaking up all different signals from the, the, the Earth, from the ground, which you can't do from a satellite. It's too far up. And you can, any kind of like radio signal or anything that's going on down on the, on the ground, they can generate a heat map of all these different signals and also filter out the important things and, and really figure out like what's what, how different devices are communicating to each other, radar communications, everything. It's very, very um, good to build all this intelligence because you could tell like, oh, look, there's a bunch of radio signals going into that mountain. There must be something important there. What kind of radio signals are there? There's you know? a wealth of stuff. There's just so out. much you can do yeah. with that information. So, you know, the U-2 spy planes saw that it's equipped. That's why, you know, from the beginning, they kept saying this is a, a spy balloon, a, su- a surveillance balloon, because they knew it was. Yeah, it a, wasn't speculation. Yeah. For those of you who don't know what a weather balloon is, a weather balloon literally has a little package on it with some sensors. It gets, it gets sent up, and it lasts about a, an hour or two. Yeah. And it actually pops when it reaches a certain yeah. uh, you know, altitude. And it has, yeah. yeah, and it has a, a parachute. So it parachutes right. back down. Then they go and collect the little package, and they... They ascertain, okay, these were the temperatures and the wind flow and all that. Can you believe the Chinese state said it was a weather balloon and then expected everyone to just not know the difference? They just ex- like officially went out there and said yeah. that. And and it's then, insane. Yeah, it is. It's dumb. Anyway, um, so we had all these 
absolutely ridiculous tweets coming yeah, out of uh, who follows me yeah. on twitter says mm-hmm. america's balloon hysteria is the product of a broken system the most gaslighting thing i've ever seen yeah and then it's got like supposedly an american saying u.s anti-china policies like a pied piper leaving leading everyone off the cliff yeah mm. yeah some projection over there a uh, little meme here. Uh, I believe this is from uh, that. It's Minions from your movie. favorite. Yeah. yeah. Uh, we send a, a balloon to spy on the U.S. and Canada. We claim that it's studying the weather. The balloon, the U.S. blocks the balloon from gathering intel, gathers intel on the balloon itself, and then shoots it down and recovers the debris. The U.S. <laughs> yeah. The it's U.S. The blocks. Thing. Yeah. So uh, yeah. from the yeah. You know, why is there? Why is it? Oh, because they real mm. they finally realize it. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. That's the joke. I'm, I'm live reacting to this meme, guys. <laughs> yeah. Not very well. <laughs> Hey, yeah hey. okay we can't all be 100 percent all the time yeah um by the way shanghai daily uh official state media had this um this this uh i don't even know what to call this guy but anyway got had him out there saying uh, shill, right? yeah state yeah. sponsor state, 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 uh, state propagandist yeah state propagandist what do you have what did he have to say that means that even if the US side wanted to shoot it down which is what most people are calling for they wouldn't be able to do so that means that even if the US side wanted to shoot it down, which is what most people are calling for, they wouldn't be able to do so. It was actually nice. funny. I actually watched this transpire hey, in, in real time. Yeah. Get, get that out of there. Yeah, yeah. It's giving me nightmares. Yeah, um, yeah mm-hmm. you just leave that up, son. <laughs> Don't do that. That's even <laughs> yeah, more. that's scary. It's scary. That actually gave me a chill. Yeah. Okay, so <laughs> I watched this. I watched this. He's got to stop gluing his beard to his face. Anyway. So we had a great Redditor mm-hmm. um, on our subreddit, uh, explained a bunch of stuff and find a bunch of stuff. But in the meantime, what mm-hmm. I did was I went on the Chinese internet. Yeah. I sat down and I went through and watched articles get pulled over time. Yeah. Over mm-hmm. and over again, they were just yanking them. Because the state in China, you have to understand, they were putting out a different message in China to domestic audience yeah. than they were here. This whole balloon hysteria, all this kind of stuff, they were doing something very different in China. What they were saying was, at first, you know, denial, right? Mm-hmm. Second, to kind of put a band-aid over this, was to say, yeah, well, we just flew a balloon over America, and they couldn't even shoot it down because the military actually can't do it. So they tried a bunch of times. Sure. But they couldn't do it. And they're too embarrassed to say that our mil- their military is so weak that they can't even shoot down the sure. balloon. And that actually, that thing you saw with Andy there, mm-hmm. the, the shill guy, that was directly after that state report yeah, I saw yeah. on the internet, which had been pulled, by the way. Okay. Um, so they were trying everything. They were trying everything. They were trying every single which way angle. And they do this on purpose. This, I was talking to someone the other day. They're like, are they embarrassed? Don't they mm. feel ashamed that they're always wrong and they keep flip-flopping on their story? But it's actually by design. If you confuse enough people, yeah. the people just eventually give up on the story because they're like, I don't understand. Yeah, they're just trying to muddy the waters yeah. is what they're doing. That's what it is. And I guess their whole point was... <clears throat> they try to confuse people to think it was just a weather balloon. First, they hoped that it wouldn't be detected. Then it gets detected. Now, oh, it's a weather balloon. Just leave it alone. Yeah. It's not that important. Yeah. It flies over and they're like, haha, we're going to get away with this. Then it gets shot down. They're like, damn it. You know, now they're actually going to be able to see what it was. We better make a stink. Make sure that nobody actually recovers it. You know, and then they start demanding it back. Did you see that? <laughs> yeah, yeah. They're like, yeah. that is that is not American property. That back. is that is Chinese property. You give it Even back. Go. My best part about that is that it's supposed to be a civilian airship, yeah. right? What does that have to do with the government demanding it back? Why would the Why government state demands? Yeah. Why would the Chinese government demand their property yeah. back? You said it wasn't yours. You said a, it's yeah. not ours. Yeah. It's just a civilian balloon. Yeah. So shouldn't like the random civilian that was having fun with his balloon be demanding it back? Yeah. Not the state, dude. It's because it was always a state balloon. Pants down, yet again, yeah. over and over again. They're walking around. They need freaking mosaic over their dicks at yeah, this point. Yeah, they do. So, you know what else? We saw um, CGTN reporter Li Jingjing, who's also a propagandist. Mm. Um, also, Ooh, by the way, has not been labeled by YouTube yet as a state-sponsored hey, agent. No. Which she is. Absolutely. She literally is. is a public employee of the state. Putting out this... Uh, okay, we, we have a challenge. Yeah, yeah, what's the what's the challenge? So, this is bizarre. There, <laughs> We did this thing a while back where we talked about China's pretty, pretty propagandists, right? Yeah. And the idea was, actually, uh, Clint Watts put this together um, ages back when he was studying Russia and China disinfo. And what China had started to do 
was get pretty girls to go around the world in different countries and do and learn different languages to do Chinese propaganda. And it was this new kind of it was the vast majority were beautiful women that were trying to promote propaganda for, by the They state. missed the mark a little bit with this one. I'll just tell you that much. But hey, that's just me. That's my personal sure, preference. Sure. Anyway, <clears throat> yeah. A lot of people obviously disagree because uh Jayo, you know. <laughs> keep it up. Yeah, yeah let's keep it going. Just keep going. Uh, keep it going. Yeah, keep it up. Yeah. <clears throat> uh, so <laughs> Long story short, mm. this woman who is a, one of the, the people in this campaign of the beautiful women. Right? Yeah. Stop smirking. <laughs> sorry, sorry. I got to set up this challenge. Okay, yeah, here. yeah. Set up the Clint challenge. Clint Watts put out a study, okay? <laughs> yeah, yeah. And they found a lot of beautiful <clears throat> women around the world doing yeah. Chinese state propaganda in <clears throat> yeah. different languages. Yeah. This is the Engli- one of the English ones, right? Yeah, yeah. Her name is Li Jingjing. She goes out there. We've covered her a bunch of times. She has a legion of like a tanky army, almost like yeah. a simp army. Yeah, and it's very fascinating to see this because it's almost like uh, people treat it as like the counter to our subreddit. Mm. It's it's bizarre. I know it's weird. Anyway, it's just what it is is an offshoot of Sino, which is like this tanky <clears throat> pro CCP subreddit thing, and it's like the yeah you know, the runoff from there basically. Anyway, long story short. Yeah, what's the challenge? She oftentimes, I think her ego has been boosted so many times by the state slash all of yeah. her fans, right? Yeah, yeah. That she thinks she's funny. Yeah, and. I had a very, both you and I, we've only watched this once. Yes. We had a challenge because I physically reeled from mm. cringe at how unfunny this was and yeah. how, also how factually wrong it yeah, was. Yeah, yeah. <clears throat> but the most important thing is we want a challenge for you guys. Can you sit through this without feeling some sort of physical cringe in your yeah, body? Yeah, yeah, cringe. You let us know. All right. I'll do a poll. Okay. Yeah, uh, please. Let me set up the poll. Okay. Going to do a poll in the chat? Yes. Um, so again, remember, this is a Chinese state propaganda. This is a CGTN reporter. Uh, she is employed by the, the state, yeah. and she runs various different um, channels. You know, of course, she appears on it's a CGTN. Up. It's a psyop. And then she runs a subreddit, and she also runs some channels. But it's all uh, the same stuff that appears on CGTN appears on these channels. So it's not her personal stuff. It's the Chinese state stuff. Sure. So let's see if you can go through this without a cringe. I have a poll up, so vote when it's Okay, done. I'll, I'll rewind just slightly so we can start right from the beginning. Okay, we'll start. <laughs> okay, oh my god! Okay. Okay, we're gonna start from here. Let's see. Hey, Balloon, you are arrested. For what? For spying on America. <laughs> really? You think me? A balloon. Is a spy. You could be. Yeah, because some genius in China thinks me, a big fat slow balloon who has no control of my life at all, is a good candidate for spying. Couldn't they use, I don't know, a satellite, an invisible plane, or a Chinese 007 to do it? But no, me a balloon. is better. Then why are you on America's territory? I don't know, because of wind, fate, karma, whatever. I didn't want to come here, okay, to this boring ass state called uh, Montana. Exactly. Exactly. Even if I was a spy, why would I spy on banana? We're gonna shoot you down. Whatever. Yeah, that's oh. very oh. difficult to uh, not cringe on that. Oh, it actually hurts so bad. Oh, mm. yeah, people are expressing their. I hope you cringe as much as it, it gives me an ab workout. You know, <laughs> like I actually don't need to. I don't need a physical trainer. No. You know, like a, uh, I don't need to go to gym. I, I just need to watch that video over and over again. I will have a six pack. She should release a set of VHSs, yes. like you know, yeah, should like, be Jane Jing Fonda's Jing's workout, workout, but it's like Jing Jing's cringe out. Cringe, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh, oh! I mean, yeah. you know what? The number one, it's mm-hmm. so wrong, yep. and that was so stupid to put that out because yeah. that aged like curdled ass milk yep. on a playground. Oh yeah. You know, like when kids like spill their milk and then the sun beats down <laughs> out on the pavement. That's and then bad. ants go into it. And then stuff. ants go in <laughs> yeah. and die because yeah. it's all poison yeah. and shit. Yeah. Yeah. Everyone's dying. Good. Uh, I'm glad. Uh, anyway, and number two, mm-hmm. can I please bring up the ju- like the the balloon enunciation made me want to die. Sure, like that was sure. horrid. But the mo- the worst thing was this uh, this idea that a balloon can't do any sort of surveillance. Really fucked up on that one. It's really good at doing surveillance. Yes, it's like it's the best. <laughs> you know, the, the more the more this has been talked about, the more people are realizing just how mm. good balloons are as as a delivery platform. And you know, the thing is, the fact that a balloon was allowed to fly right over the center, a Chinese balloon, yeah, capable of carrying any payload. By the way, anything. It could have been carrying a nuclear weapon. 
could have been carrying a biological weapon, could have been carrying hypersonic missiles, could have been carrying anything. And it flew over the entire of the United States, the central middle part. Shows you how vulnerable the United States is to sure. China. Yeah. And it shows you what a, a real threat to the people of America China could be if it wanted to be sure. or is. Right. Or has been doing. Yes. So, I mean, yeah, it was a surveillance balloon, which is horrible because you shouldn't be surveilling uh, another country without their permission like that. Yes. You know, and just invading their airspace and hovering over their nuclear, you know, missile sites and whatever. Yeah. But uh, these balloons are so capable of getting incredibly high resolution photos and all manner of other things. And as you'll see with this whole satellite thing, it's yeah. also possible that they were running LIDAR for them as well. Yeah, you never this, know. which is very important. So I want to finish mm. the poll with 88% of people almost <clears throat> died of cringe. Good. 12% of people didn't cringe, which, by the way, is a great kind of clandestine way of figuring out that we have 12% Wuma on the chat. Yeah, correct. <laughs> Absolutely. We, guys, we, we, we know. Found you. Yes. We're gonna Too bad these polls are anonymous. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Oh, well. Anyway, great poll. Thank you all for voting. Mm -hmm. um, wow, that was bad. That was a bad clip. And I almost didn't want to put that in there because I don't like to give attention to the shills. Sure. Man, that was bad. But PSYOP failed. That yes. was That did not age. No, no. And anyone taking this kind of uh, real cheap propaganda to heart shouldn't. <laughs> Choo-choo down. No. Whatever. Yeah. So anyway, the Global Times, as we all know, it just keeps putting out these fantastic quotes. Yes. Okay. Um, let me make a smaller here. This is from the Global Times. They said, the U.S. is the most unstable factor in international security. It is ridiculous for such a country to use a civil balloon to play up the China threat to the world. And its attempt to confuse the public is unlikely to succeed. Is this not the opposite of everything it said? <laughs> yeah, yes. <laughs> it's literally... The U.S. is probably the most stabilizing factor in this whole in this whole sh you know spiel in this whole shebang in right? this whole earth. <laughs> True. Okay. It's a military spy balloon, mm. not civil. It's civil military fusion, as we'll go over. In yes. A second. And the public is confused because of your ridiculous flip flop you did about twenty eight times. Yeah. It's just stupid. I don't even know what to say. Yeah, but again, it's this. Um, this bravado that we're seeing coming yes. out of the Chinese government, because the Global Times is the Chinese government, okay? Yeah. State-run newspaper, it only says what the Chinese government yes. wants it to say, and it's specific, this Global Times is specifically targeted towards an English audience. Yes. So when the Chinese government wants to put a message out to the world, it uses the Global Times, okay? So pay attention, because what you're seeing here is what the Chinese government feels and thinks and yeah. believes okay can you please play a projection because that is yeah yeah warranted. certainly can projection! i mean that is the most projection oh yeah it's ridiculous <clears throat> so what do we have next in our little clip of uh what's new here we're gonna have to rip through it because this is not fully about the balloon we wanted to put some a lot of balloon stuff in here but there is a very delicious piece of hypocrisy yes is that china was trying to drum up this whole thing about how dare they shoot this down they mm -hmm. overreacted we would never do something like that. Yeah, it's like right? it goes against international policy. It goes policy. international law. They shouldn't have the policy. They shouldn't have shot it down. Yeah. How dare you fear monger this? Well, well, I'll take a look at this little clip. We'll get us out of here. This is from CNN, actually. Oh my God. China's angry that the U.S. shot down its balloon, but it wasn't long ago when China aired this documentary about its air force downing another country's spy balloon. The commander orders the pilot to shoot it down. The missile hits the balloon. It explodes, then falls. Once again, the documentary says China's Air Force has crushed the enemy in a heroic move. I mean, it's <laughs> lit. What is that again? Well, what oh, is yeah, that that's, again? That's, um, <laughs> this button's going to wear out today. Yeah, yeah, it is. Seriously, though, they crushed the enemy in a heroic move by shooting down um, another spy balloon, another you know, nation spy balloon. The worst thing is, is that, and now if people with logic, like all of you guys watching have too much logic to, to make sense of this, because... Yeah. If I were China and I had just gotten caught with a spy balloon, I would not say shit. Yeah. I just wouldn't say anything because it's getting so bad. They're feeding, like, every, even people that are not even interested in are, are covering this because they're feeding them so much material here. Yeah, seriously, if they were smart, they would have been like, whoa, this thing's gone off course. We didn't mean yeah. for it to go in there. Sorry, it is a surveillance balloon. We were just doing some, doing some surveillance Tests. over our area or yeah. something, and, you know, it blew off course. You know, that was, our bad. Our bad. We won't do it again. Yeah. 
But they make up all this rubbish and then get all angry when it gets shut down. <laughs> no, you know, it gets more angry. What? All the ridiculous idiots that keep investing in China. Yes. That stop. are like all these stock bros and like uh, what, what's like the, the people that are thinking that China's like the next big future or whatever. And they're like, you know, people in America too. Yes. Yeah. Like, can you please stop this? Yeah. Because they keep saying like, now's a great time to invest <laughs> yeah. in China. And then, and then all this like, rubbish happens. Spiders. And then they're like, oh, yeah. and then they just wait. And then like, <laughs> then you'll see a headline. China relaxes. Yes. like investment yeah. rules or something and everyone's like yeah, yeah go invest in china <laughs> yeah. and then like a spy balloon they're like, they're like, ah, they're like come on and they can't yeah. say anything yeah, yeah. now they have china, to be all like right. mm, you yeah. know <laughs> and then all of a sudden next the world economic forum will yep. go meet yep. with xi jinping they'll they'll be like in in like in chongqing yeah yeah on a cloudy bridge yes and they'll be like yeah yeah let's back. invest yeah, yeah everyone. investment <laughs> black rock whatever like let's do it ridiculous it's dumb man so dumb anyway so again, it just proves that this ridiculous narrative coming out of the Chinese state's mouth about, oh, it's against international policy and how dare you, is rubbish because they make a documentary about themselves shooting down a balloon yes. saying it's a victory. <laughs> yes, yes. Crush the enemy in a heroic how move. How much American propaganda did you see after they shot the balloon that said a crushing victory to our enemies? None. None of that happened. None. It was very quiet. In fact, it was the opposite. Everyone's <laughs> yeah, like, Biden's yeah. weak for not shooting yeah. it down earlier. It became this ridiculous psyop from China to, yeah. to, to further uh, mm. separate people here and put, make it a partisan issue. Yeah. Which is, <clears throat> a China flew a spy balloon over your country. It's not a partisan issue, guys. No. It flew a spy balloon over that, you. Like, who's the enemy here? <laughs> yeah, It's not what? Biden. It's not, what? It's not Trump. It's no. not like anything like that. It's, you know what I mean? Wake up. Yeah. Anyway, uh, yeah, we got to remind you all about civil military fusion once again. We spoke about this last week. Yeah. There is no such thing as a civilian airship in China. Yes. Everything that operates up in the air and around is going to have something to do with the military because 80 plus percent of the airspace in China is military airspace. Yeah. Okay. But not only that, we showed you the documents last week. Any technology that is developed by a civilian company in China has ties to the military and can be and is utilized by the military too. It's not separate in China, yep. okay? It's not like, oh, here we've got Microsoft. They do their own thing and they're separate from the US military. Mm -mm. In China, it's like, here you've got uh, Huawei. Everything they do, anything they discover, any new technology that they work on immediately gets shared with the military. And if the military requires any information from Huawei, no matter what it is, they must give it to them. It is, they work hand in hand, they are the same thing. So just yeah. remember that. Yeah. So China's claims of it being a civilian airship or whatever that is was, nonsense. That was shot dead in the beginning. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so just quickly, uh, just play this in the background as yeah. we talk about this. Sure. Um, there, a while back, and I cover this in my video down in the description, you can check it out, but a while back, we just want to remind you guys that this isn't necessarily 100% confirmed or anything that this is where the balloon came from, but I want you guys to understand the absolute weirdness of this and mm. how this kind of works, right? Yeah. There was a company back in, uh, back, a while back, founded by this guy that went to Duke University called Guangzhou, right? Yeah. And they basically got military contracts in China after he ran away from America yeah, with a bunch yeah. of research, yep. right? He gained access to a lot of yeah. uh, sensitive information, went back to China, surprise, surprise, started a billion dollar company yes. there. It anyway. All set up by the Chinese government because he that's 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 what they have this thing called the Thousand Talents Program yeah. for, is they incentivize um, people from China to go and... Um, acquire technologies from overseas. Yeah. Once they've got their hands on sensitive data, they then set them up in China, say, okay, we will you know, fund your mm -hmm. research over here. We will set you up with a lab. We'll set you up yeah. with a, an institute, whatever you need. You just bring that information back with you. And that's where we've seen the largest amount of IP theft happen. Yep. So when they're stealing some kind of um, formula for a chemical or they're stealing some kind of uh, military secret or some technological secret, you'll find it's usually tied to this Thousand Talents yep. program, just like this nonsense. So this guy mm. could just play it. Don't pause it. Yeah. Um, we'll try to rip through this because we got to get to the main topic. Sure. Basically, Guangzhou, um, this guy that founded it, mm -hmm. the, the billion dollar company, he's a CCP member. Sure. Uh, as confirmed by the website. Now, the US Navy um, actually put together a whole thing about this IP theft that happened uh, yeah. with Duke. Yeah. Uh, so there's a good there's a lot of good articles about that. But the most important thing that happened out of this, there's his uh his, his CCP registration. Sure. Um the most important thing that happened out of this was um 
when looking through a lot of documents and stuff, it's it was found that uh, Guangzhou, this this company, yeah, got civil military fusion grants from the Chinese government. Yeah, like we were talking about earlier. Like we were talking about earlier, yeah. and not only made metamaterials for there. There it even says there on the screen, yeah. military civil fusion enterprise is what. So this guy that ran away with American technology from Duke University and became a CCP member, right? Well, he was a he CCP, was CCP member. You know what I mean. Went to Duke University, got stole yes, his stuff, stole stuff, and then ran back. Anyway, yeah. long story short, mm. after they get, he got military contracts for this uh, company to make metamaterials and stealth technology, right? Should be called Duped University. Duped University. Yeah. yeah. Long story short, mm -hmm. they also developed a balloon. Yes. <laughs> they developed a balloon capable of a massive payload. It was forty meter diameter balloon, right? Yeah. And it was a military balloon, by the way. Correct. Military surveillance balloon. Yes. Uh, is that shocking or surprising to you? Yeah, I watched their little thing where they were saying like all sorts of near, you know, near yes. space yep. tourism they could yep. use it for. For But this was a civil military yeah, application, yeah, yeah. right? So the uh, a deal was signed between Xi Jinping and uh, the leader of Prime Minister of uh, New Zealand, New Zealand right? at the time in 2014. And mm -hmm. they actually used a dairy farm in New Zealand to test launch this yeah, thing. Yeah. To test launch a military application balloon. Why didn't they just do it from China? It's almost like salt in the wound. But yeah. apparently it was a good spot to do it. Do it yeah. from. Anyway. Yeah, because yeah, so <laughs> uh, you can see the ground. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah, there's no smog. Yeah, yeah that's true. That yeah. Be... Anyway, later in 2018, uh, they actually tested a balloon to do this. Um... Yeah, it's like weapons payload delivery glide vehicles, vehicle glide basically. Vehicles, yeah. Hypersonic missiles is what yep. they also rumored to have tested. These are different um, configurations. Oh, there's Skip you. I wasn't, that's not supposed to be on there. Oh, okay, there okay, we go. So, uh, there was a Douyin video. They've been scrubbing all this information. Everything that I just showed up yeah, there, they're this, trying to scrub from the Chinese internet. This was scrubbed actually quite soon after it was released in 2018. Yeah. Um, and this is actual, you know, test footage. Foot test footage of them testing these weapons delivery platforms, these glide vehicles in China. Actually, I'll get us out of there. Um, and again, it's just proof of concept. Yeah. Okay. This is not saying China will no, no, do no, no, this. No. But it's saying that China can do this. It, the only reason, just pause it there yeah. and make us big. Um, yeah. The only reason I covered all that stuff was because, number one, it's eerie. And it's very, very connected to what just happened, right? Yeah. Even if it's not directly that, it's very much in line with that. And it, the only reason I covered it, I swear to God, the only reason I did is because China's pulling all that stuff. Yeah, of course. Why would you pull all of this information? Just like back in the, the Wuhan thing. Mm -hmm. Why would you start pulling all this information retroactively yeah when people are looking it up now exactly and people were putting all this information together all over the internet and it's disappearing off of the chinese language internet so what's going on yeah exactly right? i mean at the end of the day people do have to realize the threat that these kind of balloons can pose yeah it's not some there was that narrative from the chinese government that what can a balloon do mm -hmm. right what what you just saw what jingjing was yeah, saying exactly like oh i'm just like a balloon that. balloon yeah. or whatever oh. with crow sounds <sighs> it's really silly <sighs> Uh, Somebody has to eat bring, crow. Seriously, yeah. making me hit. Punch my <laughs> yeah, abs I know. Again. Anyway, the fact of the matter is, um, it's it goes pretty deep. This whole balloon sure. thing, okay? It does, and it cannot just simply be dismissed like the Chinese government would like everybody to. They want everyone to forget about it. Yeah, they want to be like, oh, don't worry about it. Yep. Like, oh. Now you got caught with your pants down, you know. Deal with it. Anyway, yeah. let's move on from this balloon uh, saga for a little bit, and move yes. on to some dystopia. <laughs> Again, stay with us, though, because I will be refreshing to make sure there's no update. Oh, yeah. And also, of course, our main topic, which is the lasers from space. Okay. But we'll get on to that. This could go in world news if you want, but it's, you wanna... it's pretty quick. Yeah, we'll just do this. Dystopia. What does that building look like to you? It, it kind of looks like a ghost town high rise, right? Yeah. That is the... It's the most China picture ever, isn't it? Pretty China, yeah. <laughs> There's massively polluted smog everywhere. Mm. There's industry in the middle of a city. You know, it's very mm. China, right? Very China, very uh, sort of tier <sighs> tier seventy, I'd say. Yeah, mm. it could even be like a tier three. Anyway, Maybe. Uh, these high rises are in fact not for people. Those, that's a pig farm. Yeah, it's a it's a high rise pig farm. High rise pig farm to get the most use out of the pigs, which uh, is space. is very dystopian. Yeah, it's just a meat factory. Look at those pigs literally just live stuck in... Not that battery farms are better anywhere, but like the sheer 
like efficiency I think it's, uh, of this. And it's the scale. It's the scale, yeah. Because, you know, sure, any kind of battery farming around the world is cruel and inhumane and horrible. But when you have it on that yeah. large of a scale that you've yeah. got high-rise buildings that are just floor upon floor upon floor of just fecal matter. Yeah. You know? Another pig around. in the wall. Yeah, it's just... It's horrible. The Pink Floyd, eh? Yeah. Isn't he a tanky? Yeah, he's a terrible tanky. Yeah. Anyway, mm -hmm. Pink Floyd himself. Yeah, he... The one man. That... He is what he used to, like, fight against in his is songs. He just is that now. It's funny how that... Yeah, yeah. it's weird. Anyway. Uh, that... I just thought it was interesting. Uh, Chinese car sales plunged 38% in January as subsidies tax cuts. So China was doing tax cuts for uh, vehicle subsidies. Mm -hmm. um, and then, you know, whenever China does these massive kind of knee-jerk reactions to stuff, you never get a good pulse. You, you can't put your finger on the pulse of how anything really is happening. Sure. But you take those subsidies away and you see what the market is really like. Yeah. And you start to see real numbers. You know, the demand's not there. No. It's just not there. No, it's kind of like if someone, if you're not hungry. Yeah. I'm not hungry, right? right? I don't want to eat, but someone like brings a really delicious pizza and they're like, have a slice. Come on, you can. Oh, of course I'll have a You'll slice. You'll just be like, yeah, right. Who, who's going to say no to so, that? So like, you don't want to buy a car because you can't afford and all that, but the government says, hey, if you buy this car, you don't, you know, no down payment, yeah. you can pay it off over like a million years. And you get years. a grant. And, yeah. yeah, exactly. You'll be like, okay. Normally I couldn't do that, but okay. Okay, I'll yeah. do it. And this coincides very well with uh, what we've been seeing. China's been dumping uh, all their EVs uh, pretty much at a loss or at cost to a bunch of countries that don't even necessarily want them. Dude. Uh, they're offloading. It's kind of like Mobike. Remember the whole yeah, shared bike Yeah, I was just about thing? to say that. That's the shared bike thing. I've made yeah. videos on my channel yeah. about it. It's a great analogy. It was insane yeah. okay it got to a point where you couldn't walk on the streets you're tripping over them because it was just a big ponzi scheme it was like a get investment pump out these cheap crappy bikes everywhere and the more you make the more investment you get and so the investors were paying a lot of money it wasn't actually earning money nope. it's becoming a nuisance it got to a point where the government had to step in yep. and basically uh ban them yep uh it was a ridiculous waste and the amount of materials that were wasted on those bikes and pollution and everything is insane Yep. I don't think the world will ever recover. Nope. Just from those damn bikes. Nope. Remember those mountains of it them? It was insane. Like, literally mountains that were the mountains size of, of a bikes. mountain. We don't, don't not exaggerating. Like, yeah. I think they think you mean like there's 10 of them piled on each other. I'm talking about tens of thousands of them. Yeah. Hundreds of thousands. Hundreds of thousands of them piled on top. A mountain. Yes. Mountain, mountain. Yeah. Not like a, oh, it's a mountain. Imagine a mountain made of bicycles. Like a That's real what it mountain. Was. Like an actual mountain you have to hike. Yeah, that would take you like hours to yes. climb to the, that kind of mountain. Yes. Yeah. Anyway. It's crazy. Uh, why do you have Mao Zedong <laughs> swimming? You know, whenever here? he pops up, it yeah. floats to the top. <laughs> yeah. I always, you know, this is yeah. obviously this is what's new. This is very much what's old. What? Yeah. Um, I just <laughs> love Mao Zedong swimming for some reason. And a lot of our fans do as well. Well, you've got uh, to get that one where he looks like a bloated. We've already done that. I, turd, every, that's why I said know? every time a new one pops okay. up that I haven't seen before. So uh, this one has a floating sign that says Mao Jishi Wan Sui, which means like Chairman Mao. Uh, forever. Forever. Anyway, so he's floating around in there. And this was during his campaign to swim in the polluted ass, disgusting sure. rivers. And just tell everyone that like, you know, swimming is good for you. Mm -hmm. And because of the cult of personality, which we've covered in depth, everyone went wild for it. Even... Up until now, I've met CCP officials in, in China that still say, I love to swim because Mao Zedong used to swim. It's still a thing. Which is Crazy. interesting because he himself couldn't swim. No, he just floated. He like did this. That's not swimming. He went like this. Yeah. Dude, if you see the, there's video footage of yeah. him swimming. We'll show it. Yeah, we'll show it next time. Looks like a paralyzed duck or something. It looks like a turd. Yeah, a turd. Floating. Yeah, floating. A paralyzed <laughs> duck turd. Yeah. yeah. Anyway, it's time anyway, for us to move it. on to the actual main yeah. segment, which is soft power hour. We talk about how China's trying to, well, mess with you using soft power. Yeah. Uh, okay, so a little bit of um, backstory here. January 28th, okay, there's a Japanese telescope which is uh, based in Hawaii. Yes. Okay, I'll bring it up here. So I'm going to show you some footage here. And it recorded these strange lasers coming from space. Space lasers, dude. I know. And by the way, it's called the Subaru Telescope, Subaru Asahi Telescope. Um, so here it is slowed down slightly. You can see this, these laser pulses. Here's the uh, contrast enhance. You know, there we go. So you can see it. Now, of course, most people will be like, what, what the hell is this? What's yeah. going on? Sure. Okay. And initially, the, um, <clears throat> initially, 
they suspected that it, I'll just go back to this so we can actually see it. There we go. Oh, sorry. Initially, they suspected that it was coming from a NASA satellite because there is a NASA satellite that has um, that uses lasers to determine the amount of ice, you know, on the globe or whatever to keep track of global warming, that kind sure. of nonsense, you know, some or other thing. Um, but then NASA kind of pitched in and said, hey, no, no, bro, that wasn't us. Yeah. Stop slandering us. It was your... almost like a, the knee jerk thing. <laughs> no, no, it's not Chinese. It's not Chinese. No, no. I mean, everyone. Remember, this is January 28th. So look, yeah. the timing is kind of important. Yes. Same time as that balloon's floating around. Mm -hmm. Okay, just saying, okay? This is a little bit odd. Yes. So um, eventually it comes out, and after doing a lot of tests, uh, like tracing of trajectory and all that, that it was actually a Chinese satellite. Yeah. Okay, and it was a specific satellite, which uh, we'll go into here. <clears throat> Interesting. Yeah. There, yeah. Yeah. I know. I know. Right. <laughs> um, we'll tell you why. It was this... a civilian laser pointer, right? <laughs> sure. Coming from space. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> yes. Yeah. <laughs> yes. <laughs> exactly. All right. So this is on April fifteenth is when the, this specific Chinese satellite, which is called the AEMS, which is That's actually when it went up. Yeah, it went okay. up on um, the 15th of April, 2022. It's actually, it's its Chinese name is the Da Qi Yi Hao, yeah. which means atmosphere, atmosphere one. Yeah. Da Qi means big air, yep. which is Chinese for atmosphere. That's correct. Because, you know, um, what do you do when you're Chinese? You're like, this is Qi, air. What do you call that up there? It's big. It's big air. It's very literal language. Yeah, it is. It That's is. what I kind of love about Mandarin is that yeah, it's so, so literal. So literal, yeah. Okay, so let's take a look. This is the da, the the Da Chi Yi Hao was launched, um, you know, from Shanxi Province. Yep. And uh, let's take a look because it, it's it'll show you in this lovely typical of Chinese space stuff. It's um, very CG orientated. We'll be able oh, to yeah. see what this thing is supposed to do. All right. So wait for this long burnout. Okay, there we go. This is their lovely this satellite. From state media. Well, this is from the actual Chinese space, um, space okay. you know, a center for space, this and that. And it's kind of their NASA, right? Yeah. So you can see what it's doing here is it's firing lasers down. Okay. And this is supposed to be a CO2 laser. It's supposed to be the first satellite with a CO2 laser detection capability. And you can see that's actually China below it. Yeah. In the demo. Yeah. That can realize all day <laughs> and high precision detection of carbon dioxide and okay 2.5 yeah so what you're seeing there is they're basically shooting a laser at a city yeah i'll explain how all this works in a minute but this is correct this this is a real instrument okay yeah. and what you could do is you, you know depending on the frequency of the laser that gets shut down it's a lidar system yeah um which is uh very very good for this kind of thing it can detect particulates in the air and so yeah. it can kind of give you a reading on how much pollution is in whatever area yeah you so very useful. Useful if you want to keep track of pollution yeah. levels in certain cities or whatever the yeah. case, right? Which China literally hides. They literally stuff cotton inside of the yeah. AQI sensors so that people can't see how much pollution there yeah. is. So here you can see in their demo, by the way, again, shooting lasers back and forth into China. Yeah. That's China on the map over right. there. So this is their official sort of launch thing about this bragging about, oh, it can detect um, CO2. So I thought, hey, I'm going to go to this, um, what is it, China Aerospace Science and Technology Cooper uh, this is Corporation. NASA. Yeah, it's in NASA. I'm going to go to their website. I'm going to see if I can find out a little bit about this thing, right? Because it's weird that they're shooting lasers. This is the satellite shooting lasers at Hawaii. Yeah. I just want everyone to understand. There's a lot of people that are tuning in. China shot lasers from mm -hmm. a satellite into Hawaii. You tried to figure out why, like perhaps why, right? <laughs> Now, this is kind of interesting. So you go to their, their website, their English website, okay? Yeah. Here, here you can see it on the screen. Doesn't that look nice? It's all like... Yeah, it looks Oh, yeah, space simple. systems, defense systems, space technology, space services, exchanges and cooperation. It looks very nice. So I thought, hey, let's go and see the Chinese version of this website. Sure. So you click Zhongwenban up there. Right. Bam. And it's like, <laughs> what is it's this? The, the Soviet website. Union? Yeah, it's <laughs> you the know? same website. Yeah. But um, now all of a sudden it's military application. Yeah, it's China. about how we can boost the Communist, Communist Party. Party, you know? Um, I don't know why I became a terrorist. It's like, yeah, yeah, exactly. Look, nuclear warheads what? or whatever. Like, what? Mm -hmm. Like, if that doesn't show 
the difference in intent. Yes. For Western audience, or I should say, Eng- the outside world. This right? is how China works. Yeah. It is. This is why we speak so passionately about like how what the Chinese government does is because we saw it from the inside. Yeah. What China tells its own people is very different from what they tell you. Yeah. Look at the doves. It's got the gold doves. It's That's a just, key feature. Yeah. Every single propaganda crap from CCP has got doves in it, man. Yes. It's cringe. This is the same website, guys. This, this is exactly is the same. Equivalent. So there's a reason I'm showing you this. It's like the, like you were saying, is it shows you that, um, you know, these things like the Great Translation Movement and yeah. so on, they hate them so much because they actually expose this. Yes. They expose the fact that to the outside world, China's all very got a very friendly face, yeah. more or less, except the yeah. wolf warrior shit. But then internally on the Chinese internet, they're vicious and very yes. um, different. And yeah. they treat the outside world terribly. So I'm just, you look at this very... Um, nationalistic, very militaristic, very sort of unfriendly looking um, website. Yeah, it looks like a war poster. It does. <laughs> you know what I mean? It looks look, like it's a Soviet got, war look poster. Look at that. That's like a, th- those are the ones I sold to North Korea, by yes. the way, those, yes. <clears throat> those uh, sort of mobile launch units yeah. or whatever. Good job. So anyway, I was like, okay, let's go back to the <laughs> English version of this website. There we go. Oh, it looks so nice, doesn't it? <laughs> it's it just so, so like... Social Space. responsibility it has up yeah. there. And then I'm going down and I'm looking here and I'm like, what is this? Exchanges and cooperation. Interesting. And then you just take a look at this and it's like, for the purpose of peacefully utilizing space technology and serving economic and social development, CASE greatly promoted development of international cooperation programs. And I'm thinking, this is just like... <laughs> such a such a thing. This is just like all these shills <laughs> yeah. and all this nonsense the these days. Thing. We have to build bridges. Let's yeah. work together. Meanwhile, yeah. behind closed doors, it's like we're developing we a powerful world-class enemy. military. Yeah. If you translate some of those things on the Chinese website, it's like... Helping to build a, a world class, powerful military. I can and make, it, I can make two thing. amazing yeah. recent analogies. And what's COVID. That? Mm-hmm. We are trying to make sure that we send PPE across the world so we can save the rest of the world. Because China, we have the correct response and we'll help you, right? Yeah. Meanwhile, we hope everyone dies. Look at everyone die. Official state yes. media. Well, look at all the millions dying in India. This is awesome. Yeah. You know? I mean, look, this is on their Chinese website. It's like just showing. Another recent example yeah. balloon, right? Yeah, it's not. That's there's nothing wrong with this balloon. It's totally peaceful and civilian and stuff. Yeah. Meanwhile, we we shot down the balloon and defeated, the, crushed the enemy. Yeah. You know what I mean? I just I really hate the fact that they've got all this like, and this is how they dupe all these stock bros to invest yes. or whatever. Yeah. Because they're like so peaceful and nice on their English website. Yep. They're like cooperation, and we strive to the peace and the corporate and all this nonsense. Biggest wolf in sheep's clothing yeah, of all time. Yeah, you go into their Chinese website, they're bloody bragging about their, you know, nuclear launch platforms and stuff that they're doing. And This is what and the space program UAVs is UAVs and stuff, yeah. yeah. NASA's not like that. No! NASA doesn't have, like, a Chinese version of its page that says, like, China's amazing, we love no. you, and then on the other side, it's like, defeat will, them with space-based we'll lasers. Yeah. <laughs> I know! It's like... <laughs> it's insane. Anyway, so I finally did track down on their website sure. the uh, the Dachi One atmospheric monitoring satellite. Um, this is before it was completed, of course. Sure. Um, and uh, it's basically supposed to be something to go up there and just monitor the atmosphere and all that sort of thing, which sounds very benign. Yeah. Sounds like um, redundant since there are already plenty of things like that out there. But why? Let me bring it back. Mm-hmm. This is the exact satellite that you've pinpointed, right? Yeah. Why is it shooting green lasers at Hawaii? Yeah, I'm going to bring that up. In a I know. Just, I'm, everyone that's new here. So it combines both passive and active sensing, which can um, realize comprehensive monitoring of the atmospheric environment in a better way, according to the chief uh, designer. Okay, so okay. That's, this is the premise behind this thing. Okay. Okay, now it's got an ACDL, which is a aerosol and a carbon dioxide detection LIDAR. Okay. And this is the device that you is emitting this laser, okay? okay? But now if you know anything about LIDAR technology, um, which is light detection and uh, ranging, I believe. i make sure I'm not making a mistake with that. Um, it's fine. I'm not, a, I'm not an expert on this stuff, so I just want to make sure. Yeah, it is light detection and ranging, um, which how it works is... It shoots a laser at something and it bounces back to the sensor. And then, of course, it uses the calculations depending on how far away, you know, how long it takes to come back to see the distance of something. It's basically to see texture and depth of things. See beyond something. Yeah, it's like sonar. Yeah, yeah. It's like radar. radar. It's the the same thing, but with lasers. Using light, yeah. 
but it's got some very interesting um, abilities. And uh, so what you can do is you can actually map very accurately um, so the, the topography of things, yeah, okay? very interesting. But because it's a laser, it can actually go through, and especially if you adjust the frequencies of the laser, it can go through vegetation, just like light goes through the trees. Almost like an x-ray. Well, yeah, I mean, think about it, though. If you're in a forest and you're sitting there um, yeah. and you see the light bleeding through the trees, yeah. Well, this can do the same thing. So it yeah, can it's go, mapping. Yeah, it can go through the vegetation, and it can actually, it'll bounce off the leaves. And here's here's an interesting thing, okay? What you're seeing over here is uh, commercial LIDAR, yeah. which you can, for instance, in the States here, you can hire a LIDAR company. It's very expensive, but they can come out and say, map your farm, okay, if you're going to do some construction Makes or sense, something. Yeah. Sees and through I'll, the vegetation. Yeah, yeah, take a look. Here you can see the vegetation, but with LIDAR, you can actually see the bare ground and, more importantly, any structures beneath the vegetation. Because what happens is the laser penetrates and goes through all these mm. gaps in the leaves and so on and hits the ground and gives you a like a kind of a good idea of so what's you, underneath the vegetation. You picture you're a farmer. Yeah. You're sitting there you're like, I wonder what's in this forest, yeah. right? Let's say you've just bought a plot of land with 10,000 acres, right? Yeah. There's a whole part where you can't even tell what's going on. You hire the LIDAR, LIDAR company to come do that yeah. for you. But I have very sneaking suspicions that that could be used for something else. Sure. I mean, like, look, for instance, this is also another commercial. I got this off of a, I think they're called Phoenix Technology, this something like that. So here's, here's you've got vegetation in front of this dam, but then you use, this is also a LiDAR readout, by yeah, the way, you, and you adjust the frequency, and then you can actually see without the vegetation what's there. Yeah. So, an X-ray. I mean, think about it from a military um, application. This is great, because yeah. you can see exactly where structures are to target them. You can see- Like a dam. Yeah, you can see where uh, there are good places to hide in vegetation, yep. if you wanted to, say, mountain invasion or something like that. It's very, very useful. Um, as you can see, this Phoenix LiDAR systems here, you can see how you can, you can adjust. strip away the topography. Yeah, yeah. Of course, depending on the kind of, uh, you know, frequencies and, and uh, whatnot that you use, it's a very advanced mapping tool. Yeah, look at what you can see compared to a GoPro. The GoPro, you can't see shit. Yeah, no, this, the, the whole point of this is that you can um, later extrapolate yeah. different data points and I'm use... to the human eye. Yeah, you know? and you can analyze the heights of whatever you can even see if there's like shrubbery yeah. beneath tree canopies. There's a lot you can do with yeah. LiDAR technology. Not saying that's what that satellite was doing, but I'm saying it's possible. It's also wicked weird. Yeah. The timing too. Yeah. You know what I mean? I mean, the timing's strange. Also, why, if this is a pollution monitoring satellite, why are they firing it over Hawaii? And Mauna Kea, the, the mm -hmm. volcano there. But the thing is, something I want people to, the, the, I was reading. Yeah. People were saying, oh, they, they caught, the, the footage was taking of the LIDAR coming down over Mauna Kea, the volcano, yeah. right? Yeah, yeah. That doesn't mean that's the only thing that they scanned. No, it could have. It's broad spectrum. They could have. They, they were probably, you know, scanning go, the whole thing. It could go far. Yeah, that's right? just the only one that was caught on yes. camera, at that particular time. So potential applications. Like I don't understand why you're testing testing this satellite uh, laser on a foreign country, especially an adversarial country. You understand? Well, I mean, look, let's also just be real about this. Hawaii is where there are a lot of military bases. I mean, think about it. Pearl Harbor. Everybody knows Pearl Harbor is there. Not only Pearl Harbor, but oh, many, many military. It's a very important base. It's a, it's a very sensitive military. Strategic. Yeah, strategic military outpost for the United States, Hawaii. Okay? Yeah. It's not just the place where the worst pizza was ever invented with pineapples on it. Okay? It actually is a very strategic like place. And so... It's very coincidental that you've got a spy balloon flying over this Montana where they've got all those missile Missile's launches silos, and stuff yeah. and like all these sensitive military things. And at the exact same time, a Chinese atmospheric monitoring satellite is bombarding... bombarding or topography. Uh, yeah, it was Hawaii. bombarding Hawaii with LIDAR. Yeah. Like, what's what, going on? Yeah, what's happening here? We need answers. Like, that's I, a thing. I mean, come on, guys. Like, is... Is it really, were they really trying to get small greetings in the middle of the night in Hawaii? Um, it doesn't make sense. Yeah. You know, until there's an official response, obviously. I, I'm not, I'm the last person to ever jump on something and say, this is absolutely was going to be used for military invasion purposes. But it's, there's so much weird shit that has been unfolding the past yeah. few weeks. I just, coming from China, it's insane. I just it's think insane. it's coin too coincidental. It's too weird. Because um, look, the thing is with LIDAR is, 
the visible spectrum that you saw there, the green, the green part there, you, you know, with LiDAR, it operates on many different spectrums and frequencies, and you cannot see most of them. Right. Okay? Yeah. You could see that particular one. Sure. So who knows what else they've been doing and mapping over there, and why are they mapping Hawaii, and why are they doing this on Hawaii exactly at this particular time? That's really the question. Yeah. Is this kind of internationally acceptable, you know? I don't know what the rules are as far as this is concerned, but the fact that this is happening at the same time is what's very, very strange about this whole thing. And it needs to be looked into, not just brushed off. And especially the fact that right in the beginning, people are like, oh, it's just NASA. You know, it's irresponsible. It was, it was uh, very widely believed to be NASA in the beginning. And I yeah. think that's a huge issue because even in the beginning of this episode, there was a lot of people in the chat that were saying, oh, wasn't this NASA? It's not. That, that sentiment pervaded. Yeah. And that's an issue. Right. Yeah. This was a Chinese satellite. Now, we are not experts on this no. by any means, right? But it's one thing to keep an eye on, and I hope there's an official response about it. Yeah. Uh, just like the, the, the spy balloon, right? And just remember that this, this is supposed to be an atmospheric monitoring LIDAR that's supposed to pick up CO2 particles. But, of course, it can be repurposed. Of course. It's a LIDAR system, okay? Well, you could use it for whatever you want, right? Yeah. yeah. The technology is there for you to use it for topographic mapping and for whatever else you wanted to do there. And uh, the fact that it's being flown over and, and uh, you know, shot over Hawaii is something that needs to be paid attention to. Yeah, I'm yeah. assuming the relevant parties are paying attention to it. But mm -hmm. it will be interesting to see what China's response is to this at some point. I mean, yes, we were very concerned about Mauna Kea's CO2 emissions at night. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like what it wasn't yeah. it was a civilian laser pointer. Like what do you say at that point? Yeah, and yeah, uh, yeah exactly. There's not much you can say. And also no. remember that's just the the only time it was caught on camera. Yeah. Okay. So behind the camera it wasn't caught. No. And it's been sweeping the whole place. That's another that's another big problem I have. Not to bring that up again, but there's so many people that are, are looking at the one instance that was captured, like you sure. you showed in that <clears throat> footage that was enhanced. Enhance. Yeah. Uh, from that Japanese uh, telescope. And right? Also remember that the majority of these uh, these LIDAR laser beams aren't visible to the naked. That's what I was trying to say, is that mm. that was the only thing captured to your eyes. So that's what your brain processes is the only instance of it happening. Yeah. When in fact it probably just wasn't the case. It was probably a, a wide, wide scale. Yeah. You know. Probably <laughs> happening full time all the time. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Mm. Anyway. Yeah, so that's pretty much the end of that. Are we going to move on to world news? Um, yes, let's do that. Okay, <clears throat> moving on to... Actually, no, Wumao Corner, sorry. Wumau corner, yeah. It's Wumao Corner, guys, where we talk about the haters. we got some interesting stuff for you today. Um, and uh, we're going to start out with this, this horrible tragedy in Turkey, which in is... Syria as well. Yeah, Turkey and Syria, which is awful. Um, ter yeah, terrible, counts, terrible, terrible. You know, in the tens of thousands, which is hor horrific. Natural disasters are just, there's there's nothing much to be said about them. They're just awful. And yeah. like, you know, all you can do is hope for the best and uh, send, rescue send as much, you know, as much as you can to help. There is, uh, the reason that I wanted to bring this up was there was a big propaganda effort, weirdly enough, from China, who is, um, you know, statistically over and over again, the least charitable country in the entire world. Yeah. Sometimes, sometimes duking it out with Greece. But always at the bottom, at least recently, right? Mm -hmm. As being the the worst, the lowest charity yeah. per capita. Yeah. Right? Now, uh, they're making a big public display about their uh, rescue team that sent over. And, and, and I hate to say to it, but... Yeah, it. No, I, I, I hate to say <laughs> it, but I think it's a very welcome diversion for them from the spy yeah. balloon thing. Because yeah. they've been focusing... I've seen them focus on it so much to the ridiculous... Because look, when you're doing charitable work, it's not there as a badge for you to flash around and say, no. look how great we are. No. But that's what China's been doing. And they've been doing it to this ri ridiculous degree. I remember the like one story that was posted by, by one of the Chinese um, you know, ministry people was like, a rescue team that included some Chinese volunteers helped so on and so on. And it's like, yeah, there was like one or two Chinese volunteers that happened to be part of this rescue team. I watched the footage. The Chinese volunteers had nothing to do with the rescue. Right. But because they were assigned to that unit or whatever, sure. they're claiming victory. Right, right. Oh, this, you know, it's, very it's convenient. just... And nobody wants to call things out mm. like that because it's in poor taste, right? Yeah, of it's course. It's like, oh, it's a tragedy, but there's human death and stuff. But yeah, it, but don't a big issue. Jump. We're not seeing that level um, when it comes to other countries. No. We're not saying like, oh, this... Um, this team that there were Americans helping with saved these lives no. and then saved this person. Everyone saved that needs person. to help, right? You know, usually what you see in the in the press is rescue workers 
rescued XYZ. You don't see, like, attach your nationality and how yes. many of them were in the team and stuff. The tanky brigade was going, mm. running with that Chinese yeah. propaganda, and they were sending out these really malicious, ridiculous things all over Reddit and Twitter, and they were saying, China's sending another 179-person rescue team in Turkey. Where's the U.S.? And it's like, if you're going to go after a country for not sending rescue team members, you <clears throat> probably shouldn't pick the U.S. Yeah. There were so many people that got sent over, as they always do. It's yeah. part and parcel what America does. Yep. It's just, it's not, they don't brag about it everywhere, nope, right? No, nope. Anyway, that was, <laughs> the, the user deleted themselves. But it was part of a yeah. propaganda effort to say, China's doing all this Turkey and Syria refu uh, yeah. refugee, or no, sorry, the, the disaster, quite, right? Yeah. Now, another part, this is really important, there's a big disinformation, misinformation campaign going on from China. Yeah. And what they're doing is saying, because the U.S. sanctioned Assad in Syria, right, mm -hmm. that means that because of those horrible, horrible sanctions that aid can't reach Syria. You understand? The, the state is saying this. Yeah. Very important to understand. That's just a blatant lie. Yeah. Humanitarian aid is not stopped by sanctions to the Assad regime, right? That's that's completely false. Yes. Yet they're running with this on an official mm -hmm. narrative and it's sending people out there to talk about it. And it's, you know, I've seen it on TikTok and things like this. People are, are actually using this to try and get in people's heads, especially impressionable young people. Yeah. Well, uh, well, my selfish American country is not doing anything. Meanwhile... The tanky brigades going out there saying that China's doing everything yeah, and, and just blatantly lying about yeah, it. It's Again, taking advantage of tragedy, it's absolutely disgusting. No one should ever jump no. on tragedy as as a vehicle for their political narrative or anything like that. It's just nope. absolutely disgusting. Yeah. Look what happened with those mass shootings in California. Yeah. Where, you know, the the tankies were trying to say, oh, look, it's proof that America's racist against Asians. And meanwhile, it turned out both of the people that, that shot other people in mass shootings were Chinese immigrants. Right. It wasn't anything about anti-Asian racism or anything. Trying to take advantage of it. They, they jumped, jumped on it. it they jumped and on they it. sent their people out to go say those things. Yeah. And it's horrific. It's Just don't so do it. gross. It's... To be the villain, it's disgusting. Reevaluate yeah. your life. Yeah, agreed. Um anyway, let's uh let's see what else is in the hater sphere. Hater sphere. Hey, hey. Let's do it. <laughs> okay. Top Android phones from China are packed with spyware. What a surprise. Color me shocked. You want to get that Huawei Mate Pro <laughs> yeah. 12X? So these are phones from mainland China, right? And I want to read uh, some of the stuff that they collect. So listen yeah, to this. Yeah, okay, listening. If you're buying a phone in China, right? And yeah. by the way, before people jump on this and say, oh, this is only phones, Chinese phones sold in China. Do you understand a lot of these resellers where they're getting these phones from? Yeah. You understand, like, if you go on some of these, like, really ghetto websites, I shouldn't say really ghetto, like any reseller website sure. or eBay or places like this, they're not only selling stuff that's authorized to be sold in the U.S. No, of they course not. They have connections to China. It's like, it's like Temu.com <laughs> yeah. or whatever. They basically drop ship this stuff yeah. here. Yes. And yeah. this this is what's happening, right? Yeah. So this is uh, this was like a pushback I saw from the whole... CCP sphere mm -hmm. was there saying, oh, well, this is just phones sold in China, right? Mm. Well, yeah, so phones sold in China and then sold abroad to resellers. Right? Yeah, of course they're sold here. So the PII being collected includes pretty sensitive stuff, including basic user information like phone numbers, persistent date, uh, device identifiers like IM, EI, and MAC addresses, mm -hmm. advertising IDs, geolocation data, right, yeah. which obviously would allow an observer to unmask your physical location, data related to your social connections, mm. right, such as contacts, their phone numbers, okay. and phone and text metadata, right, in the study found. In other words, the recipients uh, of this data would have a pretty clear picture of who is using a particular device, where they're doing it, and who they're talking to. Phone numbers in China are also tied to an individual Chinese ID, which right. meaning that it's inextricably tied to a uh, user's real legal identity. So say for that, you would be a potentially a victim of all the other data. Correct. Um, that's just so par for the course for China, but it's not something that should ever affect people outside of China. Yeah. That's ridiculous. Yeah, you know, that's the thing. I'd, <clears throat> I was all for uh, Chinese phones when I was living in China. I thought it was a great idea. I could see... Yes. Uh, a lot of the benefits of low cost, but still feature packed yep. stuff. Yep. I bought Huawei and uh, no, not Huawei. I bought Oppo phones and I bought Xiaomi phones. Remember, I gave some away and all that. And I was all for it. But, you know, the problem is um, just how bad it's gotten. Yeah, you know, turn them very malicious. Yeah. And it they always like you'd have to sideload them and like basically 
crack them to put real Android yes. on because they'd always have some crippled version. Yeah. You know, you couldn't have the Google Play Store no. on them and stuff because in China, Google's banned, right? Yep. So they were always crippled and they had homegrown like spyware bloatware on yep. them. But uh, it's just gotten worse and worse. I would never buy a Chinese phone now. Yes. Any kind of Huawei, Absolutely not. any kind of Xiaomi, no. No, no, not at all. Anyway, let's yeah. get, continue. Let's get to the too next. Too much material to cover today, guys. Yeah. It's a big show today. Mm. Uh, next up, we have... Dun, 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 dun. I don't know yet. Oh, oh yes. Oh, what a Wuma. We're looking at a Wuma. By the way, YouTube, stop it. Don't stop it. Don't flag this. Yeah, no. so sensitive about violence. There is no violence in this. It is um, a violent man that is being restrained. Now, what do you think, what would be something reprehensible to do in order to <laughs> to, mean, to be detained? This takes the case. First of all, this is in LA, right? Yes. So it's outside the Chinese consulate in LA. And what you're seeing is a huge, huge, huge um, gathering of anti-CCP protesters, but not only anti-CCP protesters, people that want to commemorate something in fact commemorate a hero that is not only loved by ccp supporters but also ccp not supporters yes it's a universally loved individual yes they put up a vigil yes memorial for dr li wenliang yes now for those of you who can't remember who dr li wenliang is he's the whistleblower who tried to alert um his co-workers and others to the fact that there was a new sars-like disease um circulating in Wuhan uh, and he actually got arrested and forced to sign um, a, a confession to say that he was spreading rumors and that he wasn't going to do it anymore. Yeah. Turns out he was right. Yes. COVID pandemic hit. He was let, let out of this whole thing and he continued to be a doctor, but then he died of COVID. He is well loved by pretty much everyone for being the first, pretty much the first whistleblower of COVID. Yes. And then the CCP basically killed him. Yeah. Right. Now, when I say CCP supporters support him, everyone, like, even if they don't like that, uh, what the CCP did, people can still support the government in general. Sure. My point is, the average Chinese person is, doesn't hate Li Wenliang for no. being a whistleblower of COVID and trying to save people's lives. No. Right? But this guy. This guy. This guy. Mm -hmm. I just, it's like, how can you be more tasteless? He destroyed the memorial for Li Wenliang. He came in and started trashing yeah. it. Yeah. Right? Because yeah. you could see in the background, they've got candles and they set up uh, signs. He came in and started tearing down their signs and smashing everything. For a, a vigil memorial for a guy that died for, for t trying to warn people about COVID. Yeah. So, of course, the, the people that were yeah, there peace, like, peacefully holding this yes. vigil were like, screw this. Absolutely not. They, they, they grabbed him. These guys, these absolute heroes and legends that are grabbing him, they're shouting things like step down CCP and yeah. beat the CCP and all this kind of stuff. Yeah, stuff. they didn't let him go. They called no. the cops and the guy got arrested. They didn't beat him up. They didn't do anything bad to him, but they filmed him, yeah. identified him. They held him there until the cops got there. This absolute <laughs> wanker yeah, I know, had a right? gut reaction or was sent there. I don't know. To go and disrupt a peaceful vigil for a doctor that was murdered by the Chinese government. Yeah. What are you doing? Everybody, everybody supports Dr. Li Wenliang. Like yes. you were saying, people in China support him. Yes. Everybody thinks he's a hero. Yeah, I mean, the Chinese government tries to cover it up. Yeah. But anyway, um, this is positive to see that he actually got caught. Because this kind of behavior has been going on for the longest time, and it's usually ignored. Yeah. Uh, we see it in Australia a lot, yeah. where the students at the universities keep tearing down the Lenin walls. And we've seen it in Taiwan. We've seen it yeah. in Canada. We've seen it all over the world where these ultra-nationalists, which, by the way, honestly, if you're in another country, you should respect the laws there. Yes. You expect us to respect the laws in China when we're in China? And we do. You, you respect the laws when you're abroad in our countries, too. Yes. It's that simple. It's that simple. And... Thank, thank, thank you for the Chinese legends that have reprimanded this guy. Exactly. Because the guys here that are putting on this protest, they understand freedom of speech. Yes. They're allowed to do this. They're doing it peacefully. They get permission. They're yep. not messing around. They're not breaking the law. Nope. This guy comes along and destroys personal property. To, How um, dare you? You know, like wrecks this ridiculous. You know what? It, it, it just, it, it seriously. Makes me irritate at the mission of Big Bang. Indeed. It really does make me irritate. Anyway, so... Just keep playing it, though. Yeah. Happy ending is that he, he did get arrested. 
Don't know what happened. It almost that. looks like he's confused as to what's happening. Like, what have I done? Yeah, there, there he is getting uh, <laughs> getting arrested. I love that they still over in California they use uh, those old style police cars. Yeah, Crown Vic, so. yeah. Mm. yeah, we used to have one. We did. Yeah. Um, so there he is getting his uh, taking down his details of the police. I don't know what he was thinking. That's such a villainous behavior. What a douchebag. The thing is, in wanker. Look, look at how much that kind of behavior is encouraged. Look what happened in England, in Manchester. Yeah. 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 The, the consulate general came out and yeah. tore down the signs. Yeah. Okay. They That's beat up called. protesters. Yeah. Dragged one of them, pulled the consulate general pulled the hair <laughs> yes. of a protester. Yes, and okay. tried to pull him inside. They did pull him inside yeah. and beat him up. Yeah, that happened in England, yeah. and it's okay. Look at the guys in Australia always getting away with tearing down the linen walls and stuff. Don't See? try the shit in the U.S. You don't yeah. get away with it. Yeah, well, I mean, obviously you do to a certain degree, but this time not. You know, it's the law is catching up. The behavior has been encouraged for so long, and yeah. they've gotten away with it for so long. Yes. That that's why somebody would have the courage to do this. Yeah. But it's just so satisfying to finally see some action being taken. Mm. Yes. It's ridiculous. Bye bye. Have fun in jail. It's not gonna be worth it. Trust me. You know they're just gonna release him straight away. Though. Think so? Yeah. Why would you say that? I feel like the it's gonna. The legal happen. system doesn't work like that. You don't just go, okay, bye. Yeah, I know. I watch all those cop shows. Yeah, you do watch a lot of cop shows, don't you? <laughs> yeah. Anyway, anyway, we'll find out. We'll follow up on yeah, it. Yeah, we'll follow up it's on not it. not a secret. No, we'll follow up yeah. on it. See if he's probably like slapped under like public disturbance or something and given a misdemeanor like ticket for, for like $200 or something. I'm going to say no. Okay. I'm going to say no. We'll, we'll follow up on it. Yeah, let's do yeah. it. Anyway, uh, it's time for Worldview, guys. This is where we talk about everything in the world, specifically with regards to China. Um, and of course, mm. you may have heard of this, but Wuhan is in the news again. Imagine that. Yeah. Why is it always Wuhan? They're fighters, dude. They're absolute fighters. So mm -hmm. there's some... Just play it in the background. We've okay. got to rip through this. We're running out of time. Okay. Um, there's retired workers in Wuhan. What happened was the they got their medical benefits cut after the Wuhan government... It's basically medical... Your retirement. Yes. So the Wuhan government goes... Uh, listen, we got to do some reform. Mm -hmm. They thought they were going to be able to make these massive cuts. Because let's be honest, the economic downturn in China is pretty bad, by the way. And there's a lot of state funds that are running out for social programs, by the way, which are almost non-existent in China already. Yeah. I mean, China is like, I have a great meme. It shows like Taiwan with all these social programs, but it's a democracy, right? And yeah. then China, a communist country has like none. Yeah, exactly. So in, in Wuhan, a wealthy city, right? Mm -hmm. um, their medical benefits were going to be restored to 260 RMB, so like okay. 40 bucks, right? Yeah. Um, and a lot of people even had theirs cut to 88 yuan. Per month. Per month, right? What what is that uh, in dollars? That's like twelve bucks. Twelve dollars a month. Yes. And, and that's in supposed the, to be your yeah. medical. Yes. Okay. Adding the maximum amount could be claimed had fallen from four. So the maximum amount you could claim in one claim fell from four thousand to one thousand three hundred yuan. So people freaked out. What is one thousand three hundred yuan in dollars? So for a max claim, that would be about two hundred dollars. <laughs> so your your maximum claim, <laughs> Kids so you're in a very yeah. bad way. You've yes. been run over by a truck. You need yeah. like massive surgery. Great, you can draw two hundred dollars. So you can imagine people are not very happy. They're singing the international uh, <laughs> yeah. people freaking out in a wealthy city that gets a, a social programs already cut. People are used to it, right? Mm -hmm. They're not going to take this lying down, especially people of that age. Oh my yeah. goodness, you don't mess with those people. No. No, not the lost generation. No, no, no. The only thing you got to give them is enough money to live on. Yeah. And they'll keep saying Mao Zedong, Xi Jinping wants Yeah, right? Mao Zedong, Xi, whatever. They'll, they'll, they'll keep going. They'll roll around saying Mao Zedong a all day. Yes, they will. Know? But you take that away, <laughs> yeah. that little pittance that yeah. you just gave them, and yeah. you better expect hell. Yeah, exactly. That's why the Chinese government's learned you don't give anyone anything in the first yes. place. It's give them, I'm yeah, not even joking. Seriously. It's like... Like, bully them to the point at where they're just going to be like, oh, I can't, like, do anything about it because the government's too powerful. And then you give, you don't give them anything because yeah. then if you give them anything, they'll be like, yes, yeah, I'll yeah, have this. Yeah, but if you give them something, be ready to never take it away. Yes, because the lost generation has been, <laughs> well, let's just say the victims and the uh, villains of many, many things in Chinese history. Sure. <clears throat> and they're not going to behave well. No. No. Anyway. So yeah, that's that's an interesting thing. It's been going on now for some time, and it's another big protest that's kind of been swept under the rug, and no one knows about. Yeah, that's right. Isn't now, that strange? Yeah, it's very very strange, and it's a big one. Yeah, tens of thousands of people out in the streets apparently. Yeah. Um, 
So, oh, by the way, there's a huge, I was on the Chinese language sphere looking at the response to this, and there's a massive, like, uh, uh, disinfo campaign to try to make people say it's all fake. Yeah. Like, oh, I, I was there. It didn't happen. Like, all kinds of crazy stuff, but only in Chinese, to get Chinese people to not believe it's even happening. Exactly. You know what else we should have put in worldview, which, um, <clears throat> let me see, where is it? I got it here. Um, which we didn't was, you know, <clears throat> you know, in Australia right now, They've, uh, let's see, the Australian government um, ordered the removal of security cameras linked to Chinese companies from government offices. Mm. So, you know, like in the government offices in Australia, if there's um, these Chinese security cameras, okay, which are linked to the Chinese government, so HK yeah. Vision or whatever, yeah. they're like... Already been caught out for that. Yeah, they're like, people know that there's security risks. So the, Ch the Australian government's like, you know what, we ha have to remove any of these cameras from our official government buildings. Right. Okay. Doesn't that make sense? Yes. Because they've been proven to Ridiculous. be proven to be like spy cameras that yes. they can be. So what do you think China's response to that was? Definitely nothing reasonable. Beijing says, <clears throat> I quote, Australia's removal of cameras is an abuse of state power. <laughs> Bitch, it's not your state. <laughs> you know, know what I mean? Right. What are you talking about? Yeah. You are you take in a sovereign nation taking down our spy equipment, just mm -hmm. like the balloon, right? Yeah, yeah. Is an abuse of your own power. Yeah. What does that even mean? Exactly. So how do you even defend that? Yeah, it's really ridiculous. Uh, so China's foreign ministry spokeswoman Mao Ning accused the Australian government of discriminating against Chinese products. We oppose erroneous practices of overstretching the concept of national security and abusing state power to discriminate against and suppress Chinese companies. Get bent. Those, those cameras have already been bought and paid for. You know, it's another great thing. <laughs> what? So like, what? The uh, U.S. is proposing some ban of like CCP people from buying land, not, not buildings, like land yeah. in yeah. America. And the official response was that... It is an abuse of power, mm -hmm. and it goes against international uh, laws. So if that's the case, then can I go buy a plot of land in China right now? Nope. No. Not so even Chinese shut up. people can. Stop. Yeah, I know. Don't just say shit. This whole thing about abuse of state power for removing those cameras is rubbish. The whole th Everything is rubbish. I buy a Toyota, and then I'm like, I don't want it anymore, and I want to you know, get rid of it. And then the Japanese government's like, that's an abuse of something or other. It's rubbish. Seriously. China. But the, but the Toyota's watching you when you're naked in the shot. Over. Yeah, yeah, sure. <laughs> exactly. And that's, <laughs> why, that's why I don't want it anymore. Yes. I caught it doing that. The Toyota's sneaking into your house, peeking yeah. with his head, like, peeking around the Yeah, exactly. And it turns out that it, it's tied to the Japanese yeah. government. And I'm like, I don't want that and Toyota anymore. the Japanese anymore. government's making porn out of you yeah. in the shower. I'm like, enough. Yeah. No more enough. Toyota. I, you know, I'm going to go like, buy it. No like a Ford or something. Yes. And they're like, that's an abuse of state yeah. power. Like, dude, it's mine. I paid for it. Right. Same thing. The Australian government bought those cameras. They paid for it. It's not a, an abuse against anything. No. It's like, get that shit out of here. We'll put something else. Yes. I, I just don't even know anymore. It's just ridiculous. This whole, they're trying to use the, these psychological tactics as if it's somehow discrimination yes. to care for your national security interests. Apparently that's bad. Yeah. It's discrimination against, yes. uh, you know, China. So last thing here uh, yeah. on the docket, we have um, apparently what's happening is foreign students, at least in some universities, mm -hmm. getting notices about having to go to pro-CCP propaganda, pro-Marxism, pro-state pro propaganda lessons. And these always existed for the Chinese students. Yes. Uh, in fact, a lot of my students would go, oh, we got to go to the freaking why Mao Zedong is amazing class, why communism is good class. And they mm -hmm. hated it. They thought it was sure. boring. Right. Uh, socialism and Chinese characteristics, Marxism class. It's literally what they go to, right? The it's pictures of Lenin and boring Stalin. thing you ever heard about yeah. in your life. They go there and they hate it. And they're like, oh, God, I got to go. Because you get demerited, right, if you don't go. Actually, I think a lot of like, college students here would love it. Yeah, they should change places because the Chinese students don't like it. Yeah, they should. They really should. Go there. Yeah, yeah. You can go wear your Che Guevara yeah. type shirt and go yes. there. Yeah. Yes. yes. A lot of Chinese students come here to avoid that yes. stuff. So yeah. maybe you guys can tra trade places. It'd be great. That'd can, be awesome. You know what would be great, too, is you can finally really get to see what a communist socialist country is, like China. The socialist, the communist uh, party of China. Most right? stable, safe, and like Most whatever. Most stable, safe. 
And you get to you get to enjoy a lot all of their social programs. It's amazing. <laughs> yeah. The social welfare net there Go for is it. incredible. You'll love it so much. Workers paradise. So workers paradise, yeah. really. <laughs> anyway, mm-hmm. long story short, there are um, they're forcing these foreigners forcing to do foreigners, yeah. foreign students to go to these. And this is, you know, what's funny. What? I wasn't allowed to go to the one in my university. Interesting. Yeah, when I taught in Inner Mongolia, I wasn't yeah. allowed because I wanted to go see it. I go to any other lecture and sit in. I wasn't allowed to go. They actually told me that I'm not allowed to go. Huh. Because it wasn't for us. They said, yeah. and they were polite about it. Yeah. Like, no, this is not for you guys. This is about China. This is for the Chinese students. You don't, you don't have to go to that. Sure. You know, it's kind of like that. Yeah. And it was funny because it was almost like something they were ashamed of. Mm. Now it's something under Xi Jinping. It's something they're forcing on people, yeah. which is crazy. It is kind of crazy. Yeah. Interesting. Well, that's kind of a wrap up of our international news. Yeah, sorry, our we worldview. went super long today, but well, um, time for Yumcha. Time for Yumcha. Yumcha guides. This is our Q and A where we answer your questions and you question our answers. We leave it up over the weekend and we cut it out on Monday. That's right. So you can watch it now. You can watch it over the weekend. But Monday, guys, you know what? Hey, you know what? You didn't put in here is you didn't put our Shaban Ho clip. Oh, where is that? You better find it. We'll you didn't play send that. it. You didn't send it to me. Yes, I did. No, you didn't. Yes, I did. How much you want to bet? Nothing. You didn't send it to me. <laughs> yes, dude. I did. Absolutely. Nope, you did not send it to me. That's really interesting. You didn't send it to me. We watched it together. Yeah, on your computer. Interesting. <clears throat> so you know where it is. I do. I do know where it is. Let me pull it up. Okay. You, you can uh, entertain everyone. <laughs> okay. So <clears throat> before we let you go, just to let you know that if you want to ever watch the full episodes with all the Q and A, because our Q and A's do drag on, um, but they're always full of some fun and interesting things, you can head on over to patreon.com forward slash ADV podcasts, where you can become a patron of any tier and you'll have access to the full episodes from now all the way back into the past also, and all the way to eternity. Oh yeah. Of course you can also um, gain access to our discord server. That's right. Which is great. Um, so Which people are, by the way, sharing the most. 32. Yeah, I got it. Yeah. Uh, well, people are sharing the most excellent and amazing and fantastic memes these days. Sure. That um, are coming from uh, Chinese Telegram. Oh, good. Uh, so there's a lot of crazy shit. So be warned. But there's also a lot of absolutely hilarious stuff. And it's great uh, to get a finger on the pulse of what's viral and funny in China. Mm. So our Discord is definitely a good hub for that, for sure. Yeah. Ch- check it out, guys. I'd love for you to join us over on uh, Patreon so you can join us on the Discord, etc. Yeah. Let me put this on the desktop real quick. And then before we actually get into the Q&As, we have to remind you that every Monday we have a private VIP show, which is called Xiaoban Ho. It's always a lot of fun. Um, and this past week, we brought back revolutionary fantasies. We did. Yes. Please set that up. Yeah. So, guys, there's this thing that happens. There's this ridiculous thing. In uh, in China, they play 24 hours a day on TV. You'll find it. It moves around on ch- from channel to channel. But you'll always be able to find these uh, War of the Resistance dramas, which are these anti-Japanese uh, TV shows. Yes. It's the most hilarious thing you've ever seen because they're always finding funny ways to kill Japanese soldiers. You know, it's a fantasy. They rewrite history. Shooting needles in their eyes, yeah. throwing boulders at them, chucking like grenades into planes. A little like a, a Chinese farmer peasant will suddenly do kung fu and slaughter like a whole platoon of Japanese soldiers using, you know, like a, a horseshoe or something, right? Yes. Um, is it on the desktop? Yep. Okay, what's it called? Oh, there it is. I see it. So, yeah, I think... decided that we- uh is it this one yeah okay so here here you go guys let's let's make sure that this is working it's kind of weird picture in picture um just take a look at what you missed this last uh monday uh, so you can get an idea of what we do here you go well we decided that we'd um bring back revolutionary fantasies they keep having to find new ways that the japanese get effed up it's got to be as spicy yeah. and as weird as possible it gets more and more absurd <laughs> It's so absurd. The fact I that the gods this. are going to come and, you know, beat up the Japanese. It's so ridiculous and bad that it's almost awesome. Many things we, that was one of many things we covered in our Shaban Ho. Mm-hmm. But very importantly, by the way, I pinned a I pinned a comment here. I pinned a thing in the chat. Yep. Go to patreon.com slash ADV podcast. 
every single Monday, like you said, a show that covering stuff we can't cover here. There's yep. so much stuff we we covered that we exposed the whole fake uh, alcohol industry in the in the previous episode. We've gone through the worst expats we've ever met. Chinese we've sex doll sex industry. Doll industry. Yeah. We cover all this uh, that weird uh, vibrating phenomenon. Well, oh, we decided um, that. You know, yeah, people yeah. people circumventing ways to get access to porn. We cover important issues. We cover funny issues. We cover everything that would get us screwed up here, basically. Yes, exactly. And that's all the stuff we, we we can't show here on the show. So please consider if you have the means to go over and join that because it's so fun. Yeah, such a fun show. And <laughs> just, it's interactive. We talked to you. The this whole last time. Monday was just so stupid. This it was great. This revolutionary though. fantasy. We found a way around. We used the, the, the yeah. god of thunder to. <laughs> Come and kill the Japanese this time. Yes. He helped out the peasants. It's so dumb. It's amazing. I love, <laughs> loved it. Loved it. Yeah, look, we wanted to make revolutionary fantasies an actual segment on this main show because it's just so hilarious. Yeah. And we keep coming across the most ridiculous clips on how the, the Chinese peasants managed to kill all the Japanese. Um, but we were getting hit manually by copyright claims. And they'd wipe out the video because it wasn't about taking down the monetization. It was about getting the video blocked so nobody could see it. If they wanted money, they could easily do revenue sharing or even claim all the money. That's mm. fine. But they would they would actually block viewership to yeah. try to censor the video. Because I don't want people seeing how ridiculous this crap is sure. that they feed the Chinese public every day. Also, they don't want our video to see the light of day. Yeah, that too. <laughs> Censorship. So we figured out a way to, it's a lot, it takes a lot more effort, yeah. but we can weed out certain clips that we can use. Sure. Uh, so we will be making it uh, a thing that happens on Shaban Ho from time to time yeah. now. Yeah. But anyway, Shaban Ho is a full on episode every single Monday. Yeah. So definitely check it out. Once, right yeah. Now. Once again, head on over to patreon.com forward slash ADV podcast. If you have the means, we'd love to see you every Monday on Shaban Ho and you get access to all the previous episodes as well. If you do join, join that. Yeah. Tier. Yeah. You won't miss a beat. Yeah. Anyway, it's time for us to actually get into the Q and A. It is. Let's do it. And, uh, for those of you who are not sticking around, um, and perhaps you're watching this after Monday. Stay awesome, and we'll see you next time. David Pay says, What a 